Hello Capricorn, Capricorn Rising, and Capricorn Moon people. This is your weekly astrological and card forecast for the week starting December 19th, 2016. Quick reminder for you guys, come back on Wednesday, the 21st at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to be doing a live stream discussion on the planetary moves in the astrology of 2017 right here on YouTube. And I'll be answering questions and comments. If you uh, want to be able to post a question, you do need to have a YouTube account. So you can always just take a second, set one up, subscribe, however you want to do it. And then we can, you know, I'll be reading all the comments and questions and things like that, talking about that as I go over. Also, class enrollment is also on for January for the Tarot Tutorship classes, the three-part series that I'm doing, and the special Astrology Love webinar on karmic relationships and compatibility, and I'm doing registration on all of those right now, and they all happen in January. Sundays are for the Tarot Tutorships, and then I've got the Astrology webinar happening on um, one Thursday at a specific time and another Thursday at another time. It's the same webinar twice, but different availabilities for different folks. So you can check that all out at my website, integrativemysticism.com. And for those of you who are also curious, my vlog channel, Scarlet Moon Magic, all one word. I'm doing a special series this week, uh, not this week, this month, all on spiritual awakening and all of that kind of stuff. And I know a lot of you guys are interested in that, so if you want to check that out, Scarlet Moon Magic is my other page, is my vlog channel, all tons of videos on that as well. Very much uh, uh, binge friendly. So. What is going on with your astrology this week, Capricorn? Well, when it comes to your astrology, we're talking a lot about this Mercury retrograde that's going to be coming up in your sign, starting on the 19th of the month. That's Monday. Now, when Mercury retrograde goes backwards in your sign, you know, from then until about, you know, the 9th of uh, January, you're going to be noticing that it's kind of hard to stay on task. It's going to be very hard to maintain communications in a lot of ways. But Mercury retrograde does have a good side to it as well. And during this time, a lot of you Capricorns are going to be digging up old opportunities, digging up um, things that got put on the back burner or put, you know, or put in the closet, back in the shelf, bringing things back to life is a major theme of Mercury Retrograde in your first house. We won't be starting a whole lot of new, but we're really indulging in, again, bringing back opportunities for a second chance during this uh, next few weeks to come. Now, that's a long angle, though, when we talk about Mercury Retrograde. You know, normally not something for a weekly horoscope like this. But what makes this week special is that on the 19th, Mercury is going to be very tightly connected to Pluto, also in your sign. Now, Pluto and Mercury retrograde coming together is not a good time to make anything official anywhere. However, it is a good time to start clearing things out or removing things or changing rules because Pluto is all about rules and laws and things like that. And it's happening in your first house and you may be actually spending a lot of this week uh, recanting or taking things off the table that you've put on the table that are actually no good for you. You know, have you made promises that you really can't afford to keep, whether because of time or because of money? Is there something that you need to get out of that you really need to sort of let go of? Is this a good time, perhaps, to, again, maybe think about um, abolishing some of your own rules that you find out aren't working for others in your life, whether it's your family, your kids, and things like that? You know, this is the time to pay attention to, to where we may have accidentally set up too many rules and boundaries. Um, because again, when Mercury Retrograde and Pluto come together, it's about paying attention to what rules or what regulations or what systems we put in place don't work anymore. And it's a good time to take things off the table, but not put new things on. Later on in the week, we do have Saturn in Sagittarius, in that 12th house of yours, that past, that hidden zone, the privacy sector. And it's forming a gorgeous connection to Uranus in your fourth house of home and family. And when we have Saturn and Uranus coming together, a lot of what's happening, um, you know, between the fourth house and the twelfth house can talk about bringing some order to chaos when it comes to family relationships 
or issues regarding your family's past. And, you know, and that's a big paraphrase for this alignment, Saturn and Uranus working in harmony. You know, where has there been a bit of chaos when it comes to how you handle things with the family or how you handle things maybe with chaos on the home front? Things may have been difficult as far as home renovations, you know, repairs, or your housing situation in general. Maybe you're just trying to, you know, get some house hunting done. You're trying to make a move happen. It is okay to do that, even though Mercury is retrograde, because it's not in either of these parts of your chart. But I would definitely say that, you know, it's time to pay attention to where we can bring order back to what's going on with our home, our home economics, and how we relate to our relatives, um, and even to our children during this time. And the nice thing is, is we've got some peace being made. Okay, we've got peace being made this, uh, this upcoming weekend, going all the way into Tuesday of next week where, you know, a lot of family relationships that may have, again, become quiet or become stagnant or become difficult are starting to actually breathe new air. It's a really nice change of events, especially considering the holidays. So what's going on with your spiritual advice when it comes to your cards for this week? Well, we do have the card of the Merciful One. All right, so again, we are talking about breathing new air. We're talking about relief, release, coming through mercy and even the practice of forgiveness. Or if it's not the practice of forgiveness, it's at least the practice of letting the past be in the past. You know, and that's one of the things about this card. Yes, it can mean that, you know, that we want to think about forgiveness even for our own sake, but even if we can't forgive, sometimes we have to give people the opportunity to earn that trust and respect back. We can't, they can't earn that back if we won't let, if we won't pay attention to the work that they're doing. And that's an important thing to pay attention to. Where is a person actually doing that work? It may take a lot of work. I'm not saying it's not going to take a lot of work, but when we have issues with trust, with lovers, with friends, um, you know, and all of that, if we're having a hard time, you know, forgiving something, at least we need to acknowledge where they're working on earning our trust back this week. Because it's, it, you know, if a person thinks there's just no way to do it, eventually they're going to stop trying. And you may not want them to stop trying. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make. For your Earth sector, when it comes to your work and finances, we do have the Knight of Swords upright. And this card is definitely talking about somebody coming up and uh, championing a cause on your behalf. All right, some of you may actually notice that a coworker or a client is actually going above and beyond to make sure you get some kind of recognition, compensation, or even a payment that you are entitled to. Okay, Capricorn, uh, usually with the Knight of Swords, this is somebody putting in a really strong, good word for us, and this can actually turn into good publicity for you. And when we say publicity, I mean, this could be something that changes a, a boss or a, or a client's mind about you um, in a way that, again, advances or furthers your work and your career. Uh, this could actually be a great networking opportunity, or, again, somebody championing you as their cause you know, kind of opening doors for you, or kicking them down, as the Knight of Swords tends to be a little bit more tough or, you know, and rough around the edges, but they do get the job done. I like this card for you, though, because, again, if you need someone to be sticking up for you, or you need someone to deliver a message, or to make sure somebody else has received a message, an enforcer like the Knight of Swords upright is a good resource to have. For your communications with air when it comes to your friends, your relatives, and the others in your life, we do have the Seven of Pentacles upright. And this card can indicate that there may not be a whole lot in the way of communications going on this week. The, the Seven of Pentacles is saying that we, there may be news about something pending that is still pending. This could indicate a delay on a deadline, something you're waiting to hear feedback on. Maybe you've made some submissions, maybe you've planted a few seeds or a few bugs in some few ears. But with the Seven of Pentacles upright, it's not getting through, it's not being processed just yet. The important thing to pay attention to, though, with the, page, with the, with the Seven of Pentacles upright is that this is not an issue to be forced. If it were, I'd have gotten a different kind of card. There's a really important message that, you know, with the Seven of Pentacles, that sometimes the more we try and force an issue, uh, the quicker we are to, you know, breaking that issue or not making it as, you know, as nice as we could. So even if we're kind of getting the disappointment about this delay or something not going through the way we want, be careful not to be tempted to go and, you know, and, and bulldoze your way through because it may actually compromise exactly what you're trying to get achieved. For your challenge this week with fire, when it comes to, you know, the, the, the overarching maybe issue, we do have the Knight of Cups inverted. 
And when the Knight of Cups Inverted shows up, we tend to see a lot of problems stemming from people almost just sort of living their insecurities, um, and they're well aware of them, okay? Because the Knight of Cups Inverted is the type of person who would, you know, almost wear an insecurity like a badge of honor, maybe even use it as a weapon, a way to exploit people, a way to gain, to garner sympathy. And this could actually just be an individual in your life, uh, most likely a water sign, a Cancer, Pisces, or a Scorpio, or somebody with those qualities. If it's not, you know, that kind of person, then it would actually be a theme with a lot of people around you. You know, some people do exploit their frailty or embellish their frailty in order to manipulate others into doing something out of guilt. And you might want to pay attention to where somebody may be trying to pull that one on you. For your emotions with water, and your romantic life. We do have the Hierophant card inverted. We're breaking some relationship rules this week, but it's not for the worst. In fact, the Hierophant card inverted is saying this is a great week for those of you that are looking to try and get out of some kind of relationship rut. You and your partner may even find that perhaps playing by certain rules or certain traditions is not healthy for your kind of relationship, and it may actually be hurting your kind of relationship. Because the Hierophant card inverted is kind of saying, pay attention to the fact that this isn't your parents' marriage or your parents' relationship. This isn't grandma's dating. You know, this is definitely a time to update your thinking with your partner. And with the Hierophant card inverted, those of you who are looking for new love are going to find somebody who is outside of your normal type. And it may be wise to consider breaking your type. You and your partner even will probably start embodying qualities that are not the normal type uh, that you guys would normally be attracted to, but it actually turns you on more because it's almost like being with a different person and it's, it's really weird, but it's still the two of you. It's an interesting kind of game to play, but I think you'll have a lot of fun. So, mine's out of the gutter. That is your horoscope. Capricorn, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And of course, if you'd like to get a session, you can always follow the links below, or go to integrativemysticism.com where you can sign up for the upcoming classes as well. I'll talk to you later.